Hello, greetings everyone. Greetings programmers. Thanks for joining us. Uh, sorry for a little late start. My last session I was running was mine. I ended up doing it live and ran over and uh, yeah, it's been a great fun event. I, I love putting these on, but they are a lot of work and I do appreciate everybody's patience and enthusiasm. Uh, it's always great to hear encouraging words, people that enjoy it and learn so much. So this session is Nick Hodges. You, you probably know the author of uh, Coding in Delphi, More Coding in Delphi, and uh, Dependency Injection in Delphi. If you haven't read them, you should read them. You should be getting free copies for attending DelphiCon and referring your friends. If you haven't referred your friends yet, go refer your friends right now. Uh, tell them, hey, DelphiCon, still sessions going, still replays going, check it out. And uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Nick and start his session on Delphi best practices, the top seven things you should be doing. Greetings, fine. Oops, wrong button. Greetings, fine people of DelphiCon 2021. My name is Nick Hodges. I'm a developer advocate at Rollbar. And I'm here today to talk to you about Delphi best practices, seven Delphi rules to live by. Mm. First, a little bit about me. I think many of you know me, but some of you might not. Uh, I have been a long time Delphi developer. I was on the original Delphi 1 beta, I was an object Pascal, Borland Pascal developer before that. So yeah, I've been around a while. This picture on the right here doesn't show the gray in my beard. The guy who drew it was very kind. Um, I'm a Delphi book author, and yes, there will be book plugging throughout the uh, presentation today. And I've written Coding in Delphi, more Coding in Delphi, and Dependency Injection in Delphi. So if you're looking for some good Delphi books to read, I, you're not going to believe this, highly recommend my books to you. You can find out more at codingindelphi.com. Uh, I used to work at Borland Code Gear and Barcadero. Yes, I was a Borland employee to the bitter end. We became Code Gear, and then we were acquired by Embarcadero, and Embarcadero now owned by Idera. But uh, I was a project product manager and a R&D manager back in the day. It's a while, been a while now, but uh, it was back in the day. I was I was on the team. I'm a former naval officer, uh, 12 years as a naval intelligence officer, and believe me, that's about 142 times more boring than they, they make it seem like on TV and in the movies. Uh, I am a fiendish pistachio eater. The Hodges family is notorious for absolutely destroying piles, those big bags of pistachios. I love those things, can't get enough of them. And I have to brag about this because it's something that I've recently mastered. I can solve a 3x3 Rubik's Cube. So that's enough about me. Let's get talking about the topics at hand. So here's the first rule I think you should live by. And that is don't waste time formatting your code. Now, note I didn't say don't format your code. I just said don't waste time doing it. Formatting your code is probably one of the most important things you can do. And I strongly recommend that you come up with a formatting scheme that you like and that you program that programming scheme, formatting scheme, and that you program that formatting scheme into the Delphi code formatter, which is part of the IDE built right into the product. Um, it allows you to format your code however you like. Um, my recommendation is to stick pretty close to the defaults, the standard VCL way, so you're not fighting the IDE. But whatever you do, don't spend time formatting your code. Let the IDE do it for you. And there's even a command line version of this tool so you can make it part of your build process that your code gets formatted before it's built or before it's even checked in even. You can even do it that way if you want, however you want to do it. But please don't waste time formatting your code. Think about this. If everybody on your team spent five minutes a day formatting their code, that's approximately half an hour a week, which is approximately 25 hours a year, which is three full working days of time formatting your code. That is a non-trivial amount of time. So don't format your code, let it happen automatically. 
let the IDE do the work for you and save yourself three whole days a year of formatting code. So the next thing I think you ought to do when you're new using Delphi is I think you ought to leverage and create live templates. So live templates are uh, the code, what you might think of as code completion or code templates where uh, you hit this, you type a few, type a small little mnemonic. Ooh, I think that's the right word, mnemonic. And you uh, end up with a completed code statement. So for instance, over here, you can see if you type the word case and then enter, it'll, it'll fill out a case statement for you and allow you to more easily create a case statement. Same is true for just about every construct. Strongly recommend you leverage these because it really makes your typing go a lot faster makes your fingers code at the speed that your brain is working at as opposed to your maybe your poor typing skills. I know friends that aren't that great at typing and uh, that slows them down, but if they can use code templates, live templates, they uh, can really speed up their code, uh, their code, coding time. And the beauty of these live templates is that you can actually create new ones. You can look at the existing ones for uh, do, how to write them and do them. And then you can actually write your own new ones if you want. And you can edit the ones that are inside the, the system. Um, if you have a different indentation than the standard Delphi way, I uh, wouldn't recommend that. But if you did, you can edit the uh, code templates and share those out with all of your uh, the members of your team. And you can end up with a very nice set of templates, that, some that are pre-written for you and some that you write yourself, depending upon the kind of constructs that you maybe do quite frequently in your coding process. And this will just speed things up very nicely and make things and let you code at the speed of thinking as opposed to code at the speed of typing. So next thing, I'm, I'm guessing I don't have to tell you guys this because this is, this is a big one that's been around for a long time. Don't on-click program. And by on-click programming, I mean you create a form, you drop a bunch of controls on it, you double click on the buttons, and you just write the code of what the button does inside the event handler for the on-click event, no matter what that code is. So when I say don't be an on-click programmer, what I really am saying is design the business logic of your application outside of and apart from the UI. On-click events should do probably nothing more than change and, and and when I say on click events I mean any event inside Delphi really any event inside the VCL the visual portion of your code uh, events the events of the visual portion of your code should probably not do anything other than rearrange or change the actual visual presentation of the code change labels change list boxes gather list box information and call business objects and objects that do the, the work of your application, create them, cause them, call them, and, and have those applications, those, I'm sorry, those objects do that work. What you don't wanna do is do the actual work in the on-click event. Because what this does is it just makes your code very, very tightly coupled to the UI. And it also makes it very, very difficult to change logic what will happen is sometimes you end up having to go to four different on-click events to change the way things do. It tends to keep your code highly tightly coupled, and that's just something that you don't want. Don't be an on-click programmer. Write your code in such a way that your on-click events are clean and simple and don't do anything other than call external objects. This is a personal pet peeve of mine, um, and I will broach no argument on this topic. Never, ever, ever, ever use with. Do not use it. Don't come at me with the, oh, use it in simple and obvious ways, because simple and obvious ways can have a tendency to become complicated if you're not careful. If you don't use with, you can never, ever, ever get caught with a bug that is very easy to create when you use with. Just don't do it. I know in the questions, you guys will probably come back at me and tell me all these cases where you think it's perfectly fine to do it, but I will not agree with you. I will not agree that it's okay to use with. It is not. Don't do it. And that's all I have to say on the matter. Next up, learn the debugger. 
Um, I think people, I think one of the things that I've seen over the years is that people don't really learn the debugger. Know that uh, you can use conditional breakpoints. You can set uh, breakpoints by thread. You can use the evaluator to evaluate any symbol inside of this system when the debugger is operating. You look at the stack frames. Use the call stack. If you don't know what a call stack is, you need to find out. Use the watch list. Keep an eye on the value of variables. There's all kinds of things that the debugger can do when you start digging down into it. that You may or may not know that it can do. And mastering the debugger is one skill that every developer should have, regardless of whatever IDE you're using. The Delphi debugger is very powerful, very capable, and completely usable and available to you while you're debugging. And if you're using show message, God help us all. Next up, I want to talk about the free add-ons that come with Rad Studio. The big three in my mind are the Parnassus tools and the Kanapka controller. My understanding is that the Parnassus tools, the navigator that helps you move around the code and helps you visualize your code a little more clearly, as well as the Parnassus bookmarks that allow you to set bookmarks and stack trace back and forth between your bookmarks. Uh, those two tools are uh, getting ready to be complete. For Delphi 11, there was a few issues with them, and they're going to they're going to be out soon. I strongly recommend that you get them installed and use them. I also strongly recommend that you use the Kanapka controls, the Raise components from back in the day. I would, if I were starting a VCL application today, I would use the Raise components as the default, not the regular T edits. But I'd go and use the Raise edits. I'd use the Raise buttons. I'd use the Raise panels. All the tools that come along with Raise components, I would use them instead of the standard VCL components because I think they're just better, faster, and stronger, like Steve Austin, the $6 million man. And finally, I'm going to plug my book, The Dependency Injection in Delphi, and recommend, and not recommend, I'm going to insist that you use Dependency Injection. Dependency Injection is a technique for use, decoupling your code. It's a, it's a system where it's a system of coding whereby instead of creating things, you ask for things and you push the creation of your things back to the composition root of your application. And then at that point, do you let the dependency injection container, in Delphi's case, that container is part of the Spring framework, Spring for D framework, uh, maintained by Stefan Glenke. And uh, I recommend that you use that. And it'll allow you to decouple your code. When you create something inside of a constructor, you basically are coupling yourself to that class. And if that class wants to change or you need to change its implementation, then you have some serious pulling apart of your code to do. Use dependency injection to decouple your code. If you have legacy code, it's a little challenging to inject dependency injection into that code. You can do it if you want, if you're very motivated, it, it's doable. But I recommend instead that what you do is you just from this point forward, start writing all your code using dependency injection. Inside your constructor, pass into every constructor these classes that are needed by that code. That's called constructor injection. You can read my book about it. The constructor injection is the most basic form of dependency injection and the one that you really ought to be using. I can't stress this enough. Dependency injection will really, really improve the quality of your code, your decoupled code that is easier to maintain, easier to fix when a problem occurs. It isolates each individual problem rather than causing things to be connected together and causing your little toe to bend when you pull on your ear kind of thing. Dependency injection is critical to writing good code. That's all I got today. If you got any questions, let me know. All right. Um, so, of course, there's somebody here arguing the merits of with Nick, um, um, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs>
So why does Embarco still, still have it implemented in the language? Because backwards compatibility is important. Um, I don't know, maybe it would be a good idea to have a compiler switch turn it off. I can see that being a, a suggestion, but um, I don't want, I definitely don't want it removed, even if I agree with Nick that it, I discourage its use. So your books, are they available in physical and digital or how, what's the, how does someone get them? My books are available on Amazon in physical form uh, and as well uh, as on leanpub.com in digital form. Um, and uh, you can go to codinginadelphi.com to find out how and where they are. It's uh, codingindelphi.com. Very easy to remember. A uh, question here, if the raised components will always be available in the future. So the future is a long time. Um, so uh, if, certainly plan to. Uh, Richard says with, I agree. <laughs> uh, David says, I love using debugger, especially conditional breakpoints. Oh yes. I also suggest using the rest debugger and it's copy components button whenever you're adding rest API calls to a website API. I agree with the with statement should be removed. Nick rocks. <laughs> yep. David and I are in, in uh, keeping with this. Thank you, David. Um, yeah, the visual debug visualizers are great, great thing. Um, I was looking at, I think it's um, Boyan Mitov adds some additional uh, debuggers, uh, visualizers as well. So uh, there are a number of others, I'm sure, that add their own visualizers too. Um, the Parnassus components are available. I'm not sure when they were introduced with RADS, with Delphi and C++ Builder in Get It. They were coming for 11 soon. Um, someone's asking if they're available for XE8. I don't know, unfortunately. I wish I did. Um, <laughs> somebody is trying to show why they should still use with. You should not I, use with. It's just an invitation to a bug. It's just an invitation yes, to a bug. The compiler, the debugger doesn't know how to understand it. And uh, I'm trying to decode the little text there. But uh, yeah, if, you're, if, you're, if your reason for using something is it takes less typing, and unless that less typing speeds up your actual typing itself, explicitness is better than implicitness yes you can use it so, if you want but you'll just find you'll just wait it's just a bug waiting to happen there's three things three things to think about when when coding one is i mean four things right your your requirements what is it you're trying to accomplish right the effort involved in doing it the readability of it to make to understand it and then how will it behave when it's maintained when changes are come? So with may reduce the amount of typing you have to do, but when you make a change in the future, you're more likely to introduce bugs because of that. And your code spins more. I mean, if you're doing one-off code that's going to be written once and run once and never ever seen again, then use with, do whatever you want to do. Use go-tos. I don't care. But if <laughs> if your code is going to be maintained if it is going to ever be edited or read again by another human being then that's a really important thing to consider because you it is easier to introduce bugs it's harder to understand what's going on and yeah it, it's 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 uh, a yeah agreed yeah the kanaka controls are available on get it in the get it system Yes, yes, they are. Um, big fan of those.
Um, so Spring 4D, is it required to do dependency injection or just helpful when you're doing dependency injection? And is it useful beyond dependency injection? Uh, I think the answer to uh, the first one is no, it is not required to do dependency injection. You can do dependency injection just simply by manually doing it, by only uh, passing in the things that a class needs to its constructors or using method injection or uh, to the web. property injection. Uh, but uh, it's Spring 4D certainly makes things much easier because then you don't end up with a huge list of, of uh, things to create in the root application, the composition root of your application, i.e. the DPR file. Um, Spring 4D makes dependency injection much easier by automatically creating the things that you need when they're asked for. And uh, Spring 4D is also very useful outside of dependency injection for things like uh, the collections unit is a good example for that. Uh, <laughs> Jay says, this kind of sounds like Nick, but he never mentioned unit testing, so I'm not sure. <laughs> I only had seven things. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Your good point. Now, I stepped away for a second. Did you mention interfaces? I didn't mention interfaces either. Oh my goodness. I know. What's going on? The world is the world is uh the world is turning on its head. Um Okay, this question here, what do you think of CNPAC? What do I think of what? CNPAC, do you recommend CNPAC? I'm afraid I don't even know what that is. Like G, it's like G-Experts, it's a set of IDE add-ins. C is in cat, N is in Nancy, PAC. Uh, I am not familiar with it, so I can't recommend. Oh, CNPAC, I, I, I'm not familiar with it, so I can't recommend it, but I've heard nothing but good things about it. Yeah, I, I'm a I'm a bit of a diehard uh, G experts fan, but I've heard a lot of people that really love C Impact too. So certainly nothing wrong with it. We're, if you're not using one, you probably should. There's also the um, Model Maker Express, another great one. You should be using one of those three. Fair enough. Do you have a list of Delphi worst practices besides some of the ones you mentioned in your best practices? Um, <laughs> put all your code inside the form one unit, like the entire application. Um, that's a really bad practice that I've seen done, believe it or not. I saw I saw one I saw one that did that. It was a huge, huge application, and it was uh, just nested tab controls. And it was like I, I had never seen so many tab. I did not think it was possible of that many tabs in a tab control. It was insane. I'll give a shout out to Ray Kanopka and say never use a multiple uh, level tab control. Yes. Um. I, gosh, you know, I, it's hard to think of things not to do because I kind of shun them from my brain, you know. I agree with David, by the way. If you can turn something into a component, turn it into a component. Oh, you do recommend interfaces. Someone's asking, is there something wrong with interfaces? No. Heartily, heartily recommend interfaces. Can't get enough of interfaces. If you're coding... Uh -oh. Code against abstractions, not against implementations. Yeah, and that that's actually part of the, um, well, it, it it's loosely coupling. That's the one of the reasons it's great to make components when you can. If you can make something into a component, make it reusable, that makes it more loosely coupled as well. So, yeah. Oh, lots of questions coming in here. Um, so, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Alistair Christie has code faster in Delphi, he wrote, and he's working on code better in Delphi, and he said he'd like to do a third one. And I said, 
How about code batter in Delphi? <laughs> code worse that's, in Delphi. that's the one I'll write. Code worse in Delphi, yeah. Code worse in Delphi, yes. <laughs> Honestly, right. I love, there's a lot of things I like doing that are not good ideas. You know, the, the fun little hacks and creative things and stuff. Um, so do you still encourage unit testing then? Of course. If, of course, I I was given seven, so I probably could have come up with fifteen or twenty. Maybe I should have, and the talk would have been longer. But but uh, <laughs> I only had seven, so I went with the seven. Uh, do, 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 do. So the, it's, I, removing with. Um, didn't there used to be a uh, didn't Jacob Thurman try and write a with removal refactoring at one point? I can't remember. There probably is one. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I, I, I've maintained legacy code that had nested widths. Enough said. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> you know, the um, C sharp has. Uh, what is it called the tertiary operator or something where you can do like the question mark where you can combine an if statement into an assignment or something right. and it's cool but every time i used to, i did c sharp for a number of years and it's cool you're like oh look i figured out how to do all of this code in one line but then as soon as you go to debug it you're like uh, uh, I'm not sure what's happening here, and you have to, to disassemble it. And that's the same thing with WIS and nested WIFs. I've done some cool things with it, and it's like, oh, wow, that's great. But then as soon as you have to maintain it or understand it, then it's like, uh, why did I do this? So is it a question here from Gordon on what do you think of anonymous methods? It says they are practical to some degree, at least for me, but then code becomes much less readable by using them? Yeah, uh, I'm a general fan of uh, anonymous methods. Um, I think that they're very useful in certainly in a number of different ways. Um, but I agree that, and you know, not to denigrate anybody, not to denigrate Delphi, but I agree that a lambda type function notation would be much easier to read and much more useful than the uh, current implementation. So I would encourage the Delphi team to uh, look into that, but you know. Actually, Marco commented during his keynote that that is something that's under, that there's something that they're looking at options for right now and how to improve that. Ah, um, very good, that's great. So, because yeah, I, I, I think it could be more concise, but again, I've seen some, some Lambda statements that are too concise and it's like i don't know what it's like you're making a regular expression now you know it's like i don't understand what's happening here but anyway it's a balance i agree with david in terms of david i he says you know you keep the anonymous methods short and for a simple piece of code like i like predicates yes. you know just a, a simple statement that uh 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 returns true or false and and you use that with say i enumerable perfect example of using a quick and dirty st uh, anonymous method to uh, make a useful tool out of i enumerable so jay says that with was to get your code to fit on uh, punch cards with 80 column rows or okay. 80 column cards fair enough uh, luckily that's not a concern anymore so Lewis is asking, what's your opinion on inline declarations? Ooh, um, the purist in me says no, but the, but uh, I like the practicality and effectiveness of it, particularly for something like a, uh, 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 you know, iterator in a for statement, for I, you know, something like that. Um, yeah. It, it can be used. It can be used in pro. In, they can be used inappropriately, but I agree. I think that, gener, that most of the time they're good. Uh, so David, David, I is asking about what your opinion is about exit statements. They seem like a hack, but of course, well, used them a few times because of laziness. 
Yes, exit ha exit statement is a go-to in disguise. There's no doubt about it. Um, uh, I confess to using having used them, but uh, I would I would prefer uh, using structuring your code so that exit statements are not needed. But, so like an if statement instead that says if this happens then don't do this instead of if this happens exit. Yes. In other words, only only code what code that which is permitted, not that which is forbidden. Like a lot of time, a common usage for exit statement is something like, you know, if this thing is null, nil, then exit. Well, first of all, nothing should ever be nil in your code, but that's a whole other story. So there's a there's a uh, oh no yeah free and nil okay never mind. That uh, could be in my How Not to Code Delphi book. Free um, and nil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember the free and nil wars. Those days were great. Those were great. Those were great heady days. Um, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, generally speaking, you used, I've seen the exit statement used to get out of a routine if things aren't perfect. And uh, rather, I would rather see an if statement saying, if things are perfect, then do this, rather than if things aren't perfect, then exit, otherwise go on. That's just a stylistic desire, but uh, I, I tend to agree with David is that it's kind of, that exit is, is kind of a cop-out in a way, yes. So what is the difference between um, exit and then, um, oh gosh, what's the silent exception, the? Abort. Abort, yeah. Um, abort, I think, is used really only in constructors, isn't it? I could be wrong. I believe abort. I've used them elsewhere. Have you? I, I've no. I don't know if I've ever called abort myself. So, Peter Guth asks if I ever used Ada, and the answer is yes. I took an Ada course in Navy Postgraduate School. 25 years ago, uh, I, so I don't remember it, but uh, it did, I believe, have a lot of constructs very similar to Pascal, as I remember. And Lewis Kessler asks, aren't breaks and continues also go-tos in disguise? And they are. Roland says exit is not a go-to, it's more of a return. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take that, yeah, especially if you use exit with parentheses around it and a return and a result equals value inside of it, that, that works too. And yes, Michael Leahy, free and nil is not good. And if you type Nick Hodges free and nil, you will see a huge set of articles about it and why I think that. And I will stand by that. So I'll ask this question then. Let's say you are creating a um, a button or you know some sort of component in code. Should you assign the owner to the form or should you assign the owner as nil and then um, free it yourself? I've heard arguments both directions on this one. Um, If you're going to keep the component scope local to the routine, I have no problem with it being nil. Um, matter of fact, I would prefer that you don't put yourself, if you're not going to create the component, if you're going to create and destroy the component in the same method call, same routine, then yeah, I'm fine with the owner being nil, I guess, which is somewhat hypocritical, I suppose, but. But I'll, I'll go so, with it. What if you're going to construct it in your constructor? Should you, and then destroy it in your uh, destructor? Or you're on create and you're on um, just whatever, yeah. Um, you're saying you should assign it to the owner, assign the owner to the form then? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, boy, I don't know what the best practice would be. I have to think about that. I have to think about that. If you're in charge of destroying it, then there should be no owner. That would be my 
if you take it upon yourself to destroy it, then there shouldn't be an owner. That's correct. That's the way I'd do it. Don't don't be ambiguous about who owns and doesn't own the component. Um, confirm blue thing. Legacy code riddled with with statements. Could there be an option to have the compiler change the implicit reference to explicit references? Uh, maybe. Here's Ray, um, Ray, Ray piping in. Do not assign owner to subcomponents created in a component. Um, I would agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah, I made that mistake before. So, uh, author's asking about uh, exceptions for error handling. I'm pro exception, but what are you? Are you pro or against exceptions for error handling, as opposed to like a, a error flag or return value or something? You may have lost Nick. I heard some audio issues. So John says the standard should be one entry and one exit for readability. Ray says that the guarded exit can reduce nesting and make it easier to read. And that I would agree there. I think that um, having like a, at the top of your unit, instead of, you know, nesting a bunch of if statements saying, if this, then this, if this, then this, then it is easier just to have the one exit at the top. So I would say, I would say, and Nick's not here to argue with me, but <laughs> these best now. practices, are you here to argue with me now? I was going to say maybe the exception will be with, but generally speaking, I would say that a best practice is something that you should understand and understand when to do it and when not to do it. I know some people that are like want to do something one way all the time, and sometimes it's not the right way to do it. Sometimes you need to understand exactly what's going on and to know whether or not it's a good idea or not. What would you say, Nick? Is there ever time you might maybe someone might use with for one specific circumstance, or is it a never ever ever use with, never ever ever use free and nil? Don't use with and don't use free and nil. <laughs> David, it was great, great to uh, catch up with you here today. I remember that day well when I met you at the Naval Postgraduate School. David came out to the Naval Postgraduate School and. Um, gave a presentation on Borland C++. It was great, and that was the first time I met him. Oh, cool. I, I remember the first time I met David as well, and Nick both. Um, I'm in favor of the guard. I, I, I should say with regard to exit. I'm in favor of the guard um, pattern, and in fact, um, uh, uh, the Spring for D framework has a nice little guard class to use that you can use to uh, to uh, protect yourself. And Go Navy is right, Mark. Um, so the question here about cleaning up unused units in your user statement is it? Um, Model Maker Explorer, I think. No, CN Packet has a, a thing for that as well. Ternary operator, not the tertiary operator. I think he's right about that. Oh, yeah, probably. Okay, um, I'm trying to screw a lot of comments and questions here. 
trying to go through here. Is there anything else that you saw, Nick, that I missed maybe that you wanted to talk, comment on? Otherwise, I think we'll probably wrap up here. I don't think so. Yeah, uh, uh, I just wanted to say, yeah, good Team B times. I completely agree. Thanks, Team B. Shout out for my Team B brethren and sisters, brothers and sisters. Those were good times. CompuServe. Okay, so here Here's a question about case statements, and, and maybe you have a thought on case statements versus if statements, but the question is, is, is it possible to have multiple results for a particular value in a case statement? I guess multiple lines for a particular value or multiple uh, conditions for a, a particular case statement? And the answer is yes on both of those, but anything you want to add about case statements? Uh, I'm a big fan of the case statement. Don't know. <laughs> So a few people asking about your gripe about free and nil. I don't know if you want to sum it up real quick or. My gripe about free and nil is that nothing should ever be nil, basically. No variable in your code should ever be nil. You should always make sure that everything is always assigned at all times. If you if you're using nil as a signal, you're just waiting for a uh, access violation. Um, uh, uh, but but I understand. maybe have an object that has a, a a value that says, "Hey, I'm not valid right now." Or why would you ever have an object that would say, "I'm not valid right now"? I don't know. I guess so. Okay, maybe let me try to think. What if you had a a connection? I guess like connected, not connected thing, right? So instead of having a freeing your connection object, the connection object would just have a value that says I'm disconnected. Or maybe even when you go to read the connection, it would reconnect automatically. Yes. The reason you don't want anything to ever be nil is for one, then you, uh, yeah, Michael. Bernabella says, well, the free and nil is used to free an object and making sure that it is freed and set to nil. And I'm like, well, why would you ever need to do that? Why would you ever set something to nil? Why would anything ever be nil? When you're freeing, it's because you don't need it anymore. If you don't need it anymore, then it doesn't need to be nil. Um, and, uh, 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 you know, it, 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 it doesn't need to be nil. Yeah. Eric says use nil for lazy loading. I might be able to be talked into that, maybe. David Miller, no, if assigned is just clutter. It, using if assigned statements is just clutter. Something should always be assigned. If it's not assigned, then you should have an assert that goes off. Um, that's the way I view it. Um, if you're if you're checking for nil everywhere, you, if you're checking for nil somewhere, you have to check for nil everywhere. And if you check for nil everywhere, your code is just cluttered with if assigned statements, and you really really want to avoid that. Yep, Michael. If you're checking for nil, then you're then you're losing control of your pointers. That's that's my my answer to your question. If you got a bunch of a destroy operations, then you need to make sure your pointers are under control and that you're not trying to ask and talk to something that is out of scope. Keep the scope of your pointers very small and then uh, only make sure they're always valid inside their own scope. So Roland says if you're using links in a data structure, for example, trees or linked lists, then you need nil. Okay, I could I could maybe go for I could maybe go for that. You could also have a, a you know well yeah all right. <laughs> Off in the weeds. Um, so says, so, says use nil to detect if some code is trying to access object after it has been released. Uh, I'll state again. Why would you ever allow that to happen? Don't do not access your code outside. Do not access an object outside its scope. And I'm going to get a lot of crap about this, I know. And I will say, read my articles online. Just type Nick Hodges. Let me make sure it still works. Just type Nick. Go to Google. 
and type Nick Hodges free and nil. And I think you'll probably you'll get my whole argument. Let's see. Oh, maybe there are well, I I got to. Uh, I'm going to have to see if I can resurrect those articles then. All right. Well, there you go. <clears throat> All right. Well, we need to wrap up because we have another session coming. Um, All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. This was very fun. I love arguing Delphi stuff with people. <laughs> and yes, I'm so maybe we'll do that. Get you and. Uh, I'm an, Somebody opinion, else. I'm an opinionated butthead, and I know it. That's the difference between me and all the rest of the opinionated buttheads. <laughs> okay. Um, great. Thank you so much, and we'll see you all later. Take care, Nick. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for stopping by. Good discussion. I uh, appreciate it. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye.